some stories, some tales, they get told and told and retold and retold. Why? Because they capture the imagination of generations. Why do they do that? I believe that great stories and great myths, they remind us of a time long ago, a time before the internet, a time before TV and radio, where most nights we would just huddle up next to a fire or a fireplace and we would tell each other stories. Now our ancestors were smart. These stories weren't just entertaining stories. These stories contained valuable life lessons and they knew that if they just repeated and repeated these entertaining stories, some of the life lessons will stick. I believe that there are some stories out today which are getting older and older and getting told and retold. And the reason why they're so long lasting is because somehow we remember. We remember the lessons. So today I want to talk about Peter Pan, which is a relatively modern story. You could even call it a modern myth. I believe the first time it was penned down was 1905. It was a novel called Peter and Wendy. For those who don't know, Peter Pan is a boy who doesn't grow old and who doesn't want to grow old. He lives in this magical land called Neverland and he's the king of the lost boys. There are pirates there and Indians and you can have all sorts of wonderful adventures. And the fun never stops and you never have to be an adult. He meets Wendy and Wendy is his connection basically to the real world. And I always had the feeling that he, uh, he could have had a chance with Wendy. But in the end, he would rather retreat back into his fantasy world of Neverland. That's basically the story. Very short, but still. What could this all mean? Well, when I started thinking, I was like, what are the names? I mean, Peter is uh, just like the normal name, but the second name is more interesting. He's called Pan. And Pan is actually the name of a deity in the Greek pantheon. I believe he's um, connected to Aphrodite and to nymphs, and he is the god of the wilderness and the wild. Even in our modern language, I believe that the word panic came from pan, because pan used to live in like these forests, and he used to make these crazy sounds that will scare the local farmers. And the local population would go into a panic, therefore the name Pan. He also had a flute, that's called the Pan flute. He also inspired that because that was his instrument. There's actually a whole other myth involved how he got that Pan flute. My point is, the main character is named after a deity which represents wilderness. Now, I'll see if I can get to that back on the end of the video. Because in essence, this myth is about a boy who doesn't want to grow up. Let that sink in for a minute, because I think all of us know at least one person who is a bit like Peter Pan. In a modern sense, could this be a myth about a guy, you know, who doesn't want to take any responsibility, who just wants to only smoke weed and play video games? Could very well be. It's a boy who never wants to grow up and continues to play only in fantasy land. Well, if you start to think this true, like it could be true, because like I think like what are the adults in the Peter Pan mythos? I think there's there's yeah, there's one, maybe there's a second pirate, but like there's like this head of the pirates, Captain Hook. That's the only adult that Peter has in his world. If you look at him, look at, look, at, look at Captain Hook, you go like, yeah, why would he want to grow up if that's the only adult that's in his fantasy world? Because he's not a pleasant guy to be around. Furthermore, he lost his hand and he replaced it with a hook. What took his hand? There's a crocodile. And he's always in conflict with the crocodile. But there's something strange that you can even see in the Disney version that the crocodile is somehow has a clock on top of his head. 
I think that's very significant because when you're truly an adult, who is always chasing you? Time. Death. That's what the clock represents. Captain Hook has a hook on his hand because time already has a part of him. And in time, time will devour him whole. And that's his biggest fear. So you could argue that possibly Captain Hook is the archetype of his father. Peter Pan is the boy who doesn't want to take any responsibility and doesn't want to enter the real world, just stays in his own mind, in his own imagination, in this world where everything's magical and everything is safe. Because Captain Hook, his father, is always afraid of dying and is very bitter because of it. Why would you want to grow up? If that's your example, and the number one example we have, you know, is the same sex parent. So for Peter Pan, it could be the archetype of his own father. Now, I always felt that like Wendy was like, of course, the normal one, and she was his connection to the real world. I always figured Peter Pan had a shot with Wendy, you know, they could be a couple, but he didn't choose to be a couple. Why? Because, you know, he had everything he needed in his own little fantasy world. And he had a kind of girlfriend there, Tinkerbell. But Tinkerbell wasn't real. But she had fairy dust, and because of the fairy dust, you could fly. So if you think about that analogy, like, if Peter Pan is the guy who just smokes weed and plays video games and doesn't want any responsibility, If you have a guy like that and he says no to like a nice girl, why would he do that? What does Tinkerbell represent in that sense? I think Tinkerbell represents pornography. Because that's the fantasy that prohibits the lazy man from actually engaging in a meaningful relationship and thus entering the adult world. If you like, if you're a young man and you get a girlfriend and you really fall in love and you fall in love together and you start getting some kids, that will wake you up really fast to your responsibility. There's no playing around after you have some children. So Tinkerbell is like pornography or maybe it's his OnlyFans sub subscription or something like that. It's pornography and OnlyFans is like the fantasy world. There's just tits and ass, and there's no responsibility. So if you start to look at that, it's actually kind of a tragic tale. It's a tragic tale of a boy who doesn't want to enter adulthood, and who is actually tempted to go into adulthood, but in fact retreated back into his world, his own little fantasy world where everything's uh, nice. And he refuses to take to take his responsibility. Um, there's actually a thing in psychology that's actually called Peter Pan syndrome. That's how I know of this. That's what actually kicked off this this frame of thought. Uh, if if people don't want to like become an adult, that's called Peter Pan syndrome. That's actually a thing. And I started thinking like if you see Peter Pan as a sort of archetype. It's interesting to know who, who likes Peter Pan and who indulges in this archetype. Because when I was growing up, there was one very famous person who really loved Peter Pan. And it was Michael Jackson. Now, Michael Jackson loved everything Disney, but he especially loved Peter Pan. And I, I think that's very telling because in a way, you know, even though he's very successful, I believe that Michael Jackson never really grew up. You can see that, like, like he had massive su success with the Turtle album, but even later in his career, he just kept recreating the same stuff. He didn't evolve or grow up. He just kept doing werewolf dances like this, you know. It was still good, but it was also repetitious. So, I think for all the ladies, <laughs> if you're dating someone and he has like effigies of Peter Pan on his, on his fucking phone or... Yeah, something Peter Pan related and he really likes Peter Pan, I suggest you run.
because this is a guy who doesn't want to grow up. That's why he chooses that archetype. Okay. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, maybe your reaction is like, yeah, I knew the moment I saw Tinkerbell with that short skirt, I just knew she represented porn. You know, maybe you totally agree with me, or maybe you're like, what is this crock of shit you're pulling out of your ass? And feel free to let me know. Uh, tales have meaning, and that's why they endure. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next week.